Hello everyone, uh, I go by Raw. Um, this video is going to be a tutorial for all things Solo Lasso uh, for Halo 3 ODST. Uh, I'm the current world record holder for full game as well as most of the ILs, co-op, Lasso as well. Um, so the main things that this first video is going to be going through is just general speed running information for Halo 3 ODST. Uh, general tips and tricks as well as uh, things you kind of need to know about the run itself before you really get started for uh, Halo 3 ODST Lasso. Um, so like I said, this video is going to be like a sort of a beginner-ish or like just going over a lot of like beginning details before you really get into the run. So if you are a more experienced runner, you may just want to skip you know, this video. Uh, and go straight into the level um, walkthroughs. Um, however, yeah, this this beginning video is still going to go through a lot of information that may be good to, to hear. Um, as well as, so, the walkthrough that I'm going to be doing for at least the full game levels, it's going to go over more of the consistent strats. Um, Basically, I may do, for some of the harder, more IL-based strats, I may do, like, their own individual levels or individual videos for that. Uh, but for the full game, it'll be still fast strats. Uh, however, it'll be more consistent. So with the, like, those following those tutorials, you should still be able to get, like, a 130, 140-ish sort of time. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to go for world record, uh, like I'm not going to include every single cone launch and every video and go over every lineup, stuff like that. I'm just going to go over, you know, the, the more straightforward stuff, uh, and you know, stuff like cone launches, you could always feel free to DM me. If you uh, are part of the Halo runs discord, uh, you can DM me that way or just message. I can, uh, you know, try to help you out with any, like of the small IL information but yeah this is just gonna go over the consistent full game path for the most part um so the first thing that we want to talk about is obviously the category is lasso um, which is legendary all skulls on uh, for halo 3 odst most of people probably you know came across this uh trying to get the achievement um but yeah you can actually do this uh, specifically for Halo 3 ODST, very fast, um, which is it's very fun to play, actually. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through each skull just very quickly, because each skull, some of them actually do have some interesting features um, to them, which not a lot of people know. So just when it comes to the first one, Black Guy, uh, Black Guy is your shields only recharge when you melee enemies, bash your way to better health. Um, so that is not necessarily true. It's not the only way to recharge your shields in this game because there are health packs. So, um, yeah, the two ways to get your shields back would be either one, meleeing an enemy. Um, the difference with, with this game and some other halos is some other halos, when you melee an enemy, you get your full shields back instantly. Not in this game. In this game, when you melee an enemy, your shields slowly start to recover. So that is something to think of when, you know, a lot of the times, like let's say you're clearing a wave. I mean, you can melee enemies as you want, right? But a lot of the times it's actually a good idea to melee the last enemy. Uh, that way, no nothing else is shooting at you. And your shields fully recharge so that when you go into the next section of the level, uh, you, you start off with full shields, right? So that is uh, a good idea or something to think about. It's just when you melee an enemy, it doesn't fully recharge. So you kind of have to buy, you know, two, three seconds for your shield to fully recharge. Um, and then the other way, like I mentioned, is health kits. So there are health kits throughout the level or throughout many of the levels. Um, so... The health kits, they do actually recharge your shields as well as they replenish your health. The only way to replenish your health in this game is by a health pack. Um, when you melee an enemy, it only does your shields, it doesn't do your health. 
so also with the health packs is you don't have to interact with them like you do in some other games. It just as long as you walk over them or near them, you instantly pick them up. So we can abuse that throughout the levels um, where, you know, you can try to run through a section, kind of tank everything, and then there's just a health kit in the way. So you pick that up and then boom, you're instantly back to full full shields, full health again. Um, so we'll try to abuse that in certain situations. Uh, the next one is blind. So blind, basically you have no HUD, you can't see your weapons, you can't see your grenades, your ammo count, your reticle, anything like that on the screen. Um, so because of that, um, there, there's a couple of things that you need to keep track of. Like mentally, you kind of got to keep track of your ammo count as you go through the levels, uh, as well as there's way to you know, figure out what weapon you have out and stuff like that. But I'll talk about that in a second. Besides that, though, for the crosshair, uh, what we do allow in this category is the use of like a digital crosshair or sticker because people honestly do that anyways. Like if you're going for the achievement, people w will put stickers as like a crosshair or something like that on their monitor, right? Um, so yeah, because there's no real way to like police it, like. And people do it for the achievement anyways. We do allow digital crosshairs or you to put a sticker. Um, so that is something that I would recommend is just using a digital crosshair. Like I have one that I use, uh, which you should be able to see on the screen right now. Yeah, that little green dot is, you know, what I use. So I would recommend a digital crosshair over a sticker because you can actually ensure that it is directly in the middle of the screen. But that is your choice. Um, so besides that, uh, there's the catch skull. So catch is basically enemies will throw and drop more grenades. So uh, grunts, so jackals don't throw nades, but obviously grunts and brutes do. So in this game, grunts, they will pretty much always prioritize throwing grenades unless you are uh, pretty like fairly close to them, like almost melee range to them. They'll pretty much always try to throw grenades at you. Brutes are a little different. Like, as you get to learn how they interact, uh, usually at long range, brutes will, if they have a brute shot or a carbine rifle, they'll shoot at you. Once you kind of get to, like, the middle range-ish, then they'll start to throw nades at you. And once you get close again, then they'll try to melee you. Um, so it's just kind of figuring out the distances and what enemies will do when you're standing in certain positions relative to them, uh, that it will take some practice, but you will be able to figure out over time. So another side, uh, quirk of the skull, which maybe not a lot of people know is enemies drop more grenades. So whenever you kill a grunt, most of the time they're going to drop two grenades at their feet. For most grunts, like it, it, it's not always like that, but most of the time that you kill a grunt, they're going to drop one or two grenades at their feet almost every time. Um, you know, brutes will drop spikes as well. So, um, or, you know, sometimes there's invis brutes later on, which drop incens. They will drop incense grenades most of the time. So that is like a quirk of the skull that not a lot of people know and yeah if you need grenades then you know oh, okay if i kill just one grunt i should be able to pick up nades um so that is something to think about uh, because of this skull as well because grunts always drop grenades uh there is side effects when it comes to like chain reactions and stuff like that which i'll talk shortly in one of the other skulls so famine is uh weapons that are dropped by enemies that you kill um as well as i believe even humans that you kill or maybe not no, no, no okay ally human allies don't apply to this it is only enemies um so yeah like let's say a grunt that you kill he has a plasma pistol so the way that it works is normally it, you know there's a certain range that a plasma pistol can be picked up at like in the normal game you kill a grunt it could be between like 50 to 100 so instead of this in this game 
and the 50 to 100 is may not be the exact numbers but something along that um in this mode with this skull so the most that a plasma pistol or a weapon that you can pick up off of an enemy is half um so the the most that you'll get from a plasma pistol that you pick up off of an enemy is 50. um and this does not apply to weapons that are like already placed on the map or weapons dropped by your allies um you know weapons in ammo crates that you find those will have like a hundred or whatever the game intended them to have it is specifically only off of enemies that you kill um the iron skull is when you die you have to restart the level um so this is a very punishing skull when you're practicing you may not want to have this on or there's tools that we use that will help with practicing i'll go over that in a little bit but yeah, essentially, if you die, you have to restart from the beginning of the level for solo. Uh, for co-op, if you die, you restart at the last checkpoint. But we're mainly talking about solo here. So, yeah. Um, for the speed run, um, you, you can still get away with dying. Like You don't have to do a deathless run. Uh, I mean, maybe to beat the world record, you'd need a deathless run. But um, for the most part... Like, let's say you die five seconds into the into a level or ten seconds into a level. You know, just reverting to the beginning of the level isn't that punishing. Um, but obviously, if you're five minutes into a level and die, restarting the level is going to be a big time loss, right? So you don't have to have deathless if it's, you know, not that punishing of a death time-wise. But yeah, if you do die later on into a level, it's going to be punishing um also in this category we do not allow save and quit um so if you've been if you ever tried to go for the achievements probably you abuse save and quit you can't use save and quit for this category um so yeah something to note uh mythic skull is just enemies have increased health increased health actually means two times health um but for the most part this doesn't really apply to many things besides like hunters for example uh because most enemies in this game we are just going to be using a plasma pistol and a precision weapon to kill them um but yeah because enemies get two times health like even sticking them with grenades stuff like that it, it's not going to kill them so for for how we end up playing the game this doesn't really matter um but something to know like hunters the big difference that you'll notice is just hunters take two <clears throat> uh spartan lasers to kill rather than one um and that only applies in one spot so yeah um thunderstorm upgrades the ranks of most enemies it just means that basically enemies are stronger um you know also the they tend to have uh better weapons uh in certain situations so but once again, you don't really have to worry about that too much. It just makes the game harder, basically. Um, so the Tilt Skull is an interesting skull because this skull actually applies to you as well as a player. So enemy resistances and weak weaknesses are increased. So basically what that means is plasma weapons do more damage to shields. Um, and human weapons do more damage to health and then vice versa so human weapons are going to do even less damage to shields now uh, and plasma weapons are going to do even less damage to health uh now essentially um so because strength strengths and weaknesses are increased um essentially this actually because it applies to you like when covenant actually shoot at you with like you'll lose your shields very quickly in this game like you'll you'll try to run through a section grunts will start plasma pistoling you you're going to instantly lose your shields however as long as they're not shooting you with like a brute shot or something like that it's just plasma pistols you'll find that you're actually pretty tanky um because plasma weapons they do even less damage to you um to your health essentially so that also applies for frag nades if you're using them to do uh, grenade boosts and stuff like that. Uh, if you're at full shields, uh, if you you could actually throw two 
frag grenades and your shield still won't um won't expire basically so you could actually tank two full uh frag nades um and still have partial shields and still have health um with plasma you can only tank one plasma grenade uh before your shields get depleted so that is also something to note um and then also so the tough luck skull enemies always go berserk dive out away never flee um so this skull also has a few different um features or whatever you want to say um so basically if you crack a brute shields um they're pretty much always going to go berserk which means that they're gonna you know go into their monkey stance and kind of run at you and try to melee you right um so this is useful in certain situations like if you see a brute that has a brute shot you want to crack his shields as quick as possible to get that brute shot out of his hands um so that's very useful and then enemies always dive out of the way so this is useful because frags are almost useless besides doing you know uh boosts or debris launches stuff like that um, the only other use that they have is throwing it at enemies and it will cause them to dive out of the way, which if you're trying to run through a section, uh, grenades are very useful for making enemies just dive. They won't shoot at you while they're diving. Um, so that is very useful as well. And never flee just means like, um, the grunts will turn into like suicide grunts before they kind of run around and flee there are still some situations where grunts will flee uh but it's pretty rare like for the most part um enemies are going to come at you and then if you were to kill a brute that's a leader of grunts most of the time they're going to turn into suicide grunts rather than run away and flee um so the last three skulls uh, is cowbell. So cowbell is acceleration from explosions is increased. So that doesn't mean it's not like the boom skull in other Halo games where the explosion radius is bigger. All it means is that uh, things that are pushed by the cowbell skull will it, it accelerates those. So doing things like debris launches, nade jumps, all that stuff it is. It has a greater effect. Um, this also applies to melees as well, which doesn't really come in too, too much. But yeah, like melees also apply the cowbell effect where um, there, there's greater acceleration from melees. Um, the Grunt Birthday Skull. So most of the time you would think that this skull doesn't really do much. However, in Lasso, it actually surprisingly can be pretty troll. Um, the reason for that is because, like I mentioned, the catch skull before enemies drop um, grenades, right, when they die. So the grunt birthday skull actually has a little explosion radius when you headshot a grunt. It's not just confetti like uh, a visual thing. It actually does give off a small explosion radius. So if you were to headshot a grunt when you're at 1 HP and it's standing right beside you, you will actually kill yourself to the grunt headshot explosion. Um, besides that, so because it is an explosion, if you were to kill a grunt, like headshot a grunt, over the dead body of another grunt who probably dropped grenades, it is going to cause a chain reaction. Um, also, if you headshot a grunt while another grunt is throwing a grenade in the back, so like you know, the grenade's traveling, and then you headshot a grunt here, it's going to chain react to the grenade, and it's going to just kind of fly in your face and blow up instantly. Um, so that is actually something to actually take into account. Like, you actually have to take into account uh, when you're headshotting grunts because you want to avoid trying to kill yourself with chain reactions in certain, certain situations. And then the last goal is I would have been your daddy, which is actually, it just has no effect at all, really. It just plays rare dialogue and stuff like that. Literally doesn't affect the game at all. Um, so those are all the skulls. Uh, sorry for the long explanations, but it, it is actually very useful to actually fully understand the effects that each skull has. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, 
so now that we've gone over basically what legendary all skulls is um there's a few things that you want to know before you actually get into the run itself so um this applies to other categories as well but basically when you're doing uh solo full game runs um there are weapon caches in the street sections um and those weapon caches you can only get access to if you collect the audio logs which are the collectible of the game um so uh it, basically there's one weapon cache that we really need access to though because it has a mongoose and you need at least eight audio logs in order to get access to that uh weapon cache so before you really start trying to do runs of this game you need to at least have eight audio logs um it is recommended for lasso to actually have well 29 i guess the you have to collect all the ones in the street sections um the reason for that is because the the 30th one is in data hive and uh it, it changes a small interaction that you have with one of the npcs and essentially it it, it deloads four drones as well as your ally can potentially tank some bullets um in one small section so i recommend getting all 29 you can do it without all 29 but yeah you need you guarantee you need at least eight um as i mentioned digital crosshair for catch i recommend it i have one on the screen i can put the, the crosshair app that i use in uh the description i have no affiliation with them or anything i've just really enjoyed this crosshair app so i'll link that and then besides that uh there are a couple other things so uh for this run itself it is recommended so obviously this game came out on the 360 originally you can also play it on like the xbox one via like backwards compatibility and stuff like that but it is recommended to play on the master chief version uh on the pc so the reason for that is because on the PC, there are several settings that you don't have access to on uh, console, as well as you can use keyboard and mouse, which is very important. So when we're going through the settings, um, the main settings that you want to make sure are on for this run um, is, first of all, under gameplay, you want your crosshair position centered. Um, that is so that when you're using a digital crosshair, it matches up correctly in the center of the screen. And if you're using like a sniper, it's also in the center of the screen. So you want to make sure you're using centered. Um, there are other things that are nice if you can uh, change them. Like your... Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, because I'm not in the game, the settings are a little different. But yeah, your frame rate, uh, like FPS, you want to make as high as you possibly can. Um, so another important thing is FOV. So there are two, there's the first person FOV as well as third person FOV. So like when you drive vehicles and stuff like that. Um, you're going to want to experiment with this and however you feel comfortable with it. Because based on your FOV, lineups may actually be different. So if you don't use the exact same FOV that I use and you're following my exact tutorial, then any lineups that I'm using, it may look different on your screen and you may actually have to like maybe use the same general, you know, uh, sort of uh, walkthrough that I'm doing, but you may have to actually find your own lineup. Um, so yeah, like for FOV, you definitely want to do whatever you feel comfortable with uh, for that before you really start to learn the run because once you change the FOV your lineups are going to be different um, also so like I mentioned so mouse and keyboard very important so you can play this run on controller however for certain sections uh, if you want to be fast you want to use keyboard and mouse so that is mainly for the driving ghosts and banshees um basically whenever you're boosting in a ghost on controller or in a banshee 
uh, you're kind of locked to a certain turn radius while boosting. On keyboard and mouse, that doesn't exist. Like, you just do 360s while boosting. So there's no, like, uh, lock to your turn radius, which gives you way more control over your ghosts. Like, you will save time just because you're able to control your ghost and banshee better. Um, so, yeah. It is recommended, at least for those sections, to play keyboard and mouse. Um, and then the rest of the sections, you can play controller if you want. I actually do that. I play controller for the combat sections and I use um, keyboard and mouse for banshees and stuff like that. Um, so for timing wise, the way that we time this game, we time this game based on post game carnage report. So just at the end of every level, it gives you a time that you've completed the level. So it's basically an in-game timer. So what you can do is when you're switching peripherals, you can pause the game briefly and then, you know, get situated, get comfortable and then unpause the game. Right. So you don't actually have to worry about losing time switching between peripheral peripherals. Uh, you can pause the game. Um, now, that being said, like if you were to pause your game for like 30 minutes and come back, you have to go mid, <laughs> you know, mid run bathroom break. Um, people may have an issue with that. Um, but if you're just using it to, to switch peripherals and stuff like that, um, it, it's definitely allowed. Okay. So a couple other things to mention before we actually get into the run and into more details of the game itself. So, um, on the current patch of this game, uh, there are a couple things. Uh, things that they're they're very small details however some people do prefer to down patch uh, their master chief collection for odst uh, you'll have to talk in the discord about that because i don't actually down patch my game i don't think it makes too like that big of a difference but i'll still talk about it so um in certain situations on current patch brutes will slide um so basically the, the main time that you would notice this is like prepare to drop. For example, there's the staircase uh, that you're fighting some brutes on. And if you plasma pistol a brute or something, they're going to like kind of moonwalk down the stairs or like slide down the stairs. Um, so that doesn't happen if you down patch your game correctly. So there's no sliding brutes as well as um, sometimes you'll notice that if you're doing runs and you have the in-game timer up, um at the beginning of a level it won't actually show it you have to pause your game and unpause it for the in-game timer to show back up so that doesn't happen when you down patch your game it just the, the in-game timer always shows up correctly um besides that there's also a tool that we use which is called halo checkpoint manager so halo checkpoint manager um basically it is a tool that allows you to make checkpoints in the game like these are my odst checkpoints like i have a whole bunch of different checkpoints for practice um so it just allows you to create your own custom checkpoints uh it does also have other features where um you can like enable disable the skulls turn on in invincibility stuff like that to help with practice obviously during an actual run you cannot use this application however uh yeah during like for practice is very useful because then you don't have to worry about like the iron skull or stuff like that you can just save right before a trick that you're trying to practice and then just keep reverting to it it's very very useful and i'll be using it while doing these walkthroughs uh to you know just be able to redo certain sections and show different things um yeah, and then also, as I mentioned, the Halo Runs Discord. If you have any questions that these videos don't answer or stuff like that, just feel free to post in there and somebody will help you or, you know, if I'm around, I'll help you. So, uh, yeah, make sure to join the Halo Runs Discord. So, that is most of the information. There's still just some very basic stuff that I want to go over, uh, which are just other details uh in terms of like movement and and things like that uh for the game 
um, or just things that you would want to know before going into like a run itself. Um, so the first thing, which I'll also touch on this in the first level video, but what you want to do is make sure, obviously you have legendary, all the skulls, the 12 skulls that you need, but you want to make sure that you have competitive scoring or competitive time on. I, re I recommend competitive timing because it actually kind of shows you some rough in-game splits that you can use to like compare against. Um, but yeah, you want this on because also, even though we have the blind skull on, uh, this for lasso, if you headshot an enemy, it'll show like the headshot medal. So like, it does actually give you some feedback and information um, that is useful. So I recommend having competitive time on, legendary all skulls on. As well as the way that we start this run, we start from the prepare to drop cutscene. So you want to make sure you start from the prepare to drop cutscene. Uh, the Mombasa Streets recon helmet rally point is also where we like start the run. Like You'll notice when you're in the drop pod, it's technically this rally point. However, we don't start from here. We start from prepare to drop because... If you start from the rally point, it kind of changes how like doors are unlocked and stuff like that uh, in the Mombasa overworld section. So yeah, you want to always start your run from prepare to drop. Um, that being said, uh, when you're actually in the prepare to drop section, like in the, the pod, let's say you need to restart. You can, while you're in the level, you can press start and restart the level. You don't have to always back out and go back to this cutscene, but the main thing is just that you always start the run uh, or attempts from here, and then you could restart when you're actually in the level. Um, so what I will do though is let me just load into an MPD here just to show off a couple of things. And like I mentioned, this is supposed to be kind of like a beginner tutorial. Like, you don't actually have to know how to do any of the other runs um, in order to follow this. So that's why I'm just giving some details. Back inside. Let's so let's say power. we're in what about all those the run, Besides right? On the way up. Um, now we get so go. the goal is to get to, like, the door or the pathing that you want to take, oh, right? Is there's a door on the right-hand side here. I'm really digging all so these stairs. movement-wise, what you'd want to do is you always want to travel really in you the straightest line possible if you can, uh, because it's the fastest, right? So, you know, here's the door that I wanted to go to. I jumped up here. I went in like a straight line, essentially. Obviously, if you are zigzagging, it's going to take you longer to get to that point. So. Like, obviously, this this seems very basic and very obvious, but just when you're also doing combat, you want to try to continue to move towards your objective or the pathing that you want to go to, right? Um, so it's just something to keep in mind, is you always want to be traveling towards your goal in the straightest possible line. Um, so there is also another form of tech that we do in the run is called slide jumping. So on downhill or you know sloped surfaces if i were to just jump regularly you know i just jump off of a surface it still does actually save some time if you're just jumping normally however you can slide jump so what a slide jump is is essentially you when you jump in the air you want to crouch and then when you land on a down uh, surface you want to uncrouch and jump and if you do it correctly you'll get an extra boost of momentum uh, so let's see if I can just do one here. Oh, I messed it up. It is pretty precise, because essentially you want to uncrouch. So think of it this way. Your your feet or your legs are like this, right, when you're in the air. But when you crouch, it gets halved. So now that half that's missing, when you're in the air, if you uncrouch, when that bottom half that's missing, the, the floor is there now when you uncrouch and jump you're kind of like almost springing yourself like your hitbox is now hitting the floor very quickly and then you're jumping uh if that makes sense um so yeah let's give it another try here yeah, i got a small one there but yeah essentially you just want to un like jump and then uncrouch um 
as you're landing and it will give you a boost of momentum so also when you're going up surf up slopes you want to jump as well however you don't want to jump or when you land you don't want to jump on the first frame because like kind of since it's a slope surface it'll push you back a little bit however each time you jump on a surface that is going upwards uh, you save a couple of frames so essentially you just want to and you know it's not much but it does save some time so i'm going up a slope surface i jump i land i wait you know 0.1 of a second 0.2 of a second and then i jump again um and then yeah slide jumps like i said you know you can uh crouch and then uncrouch and, and jump and it should give you a little boost um besides that uh, obviously grenade jumps so you know if I throw a nade at my feet and then I jump I get an extra you know boost vertically so we use that in a lot of sections um, besides that a like we also use grenades to do debris launches so here's like a launch off of this cone that we do and it shoots me all the way towards the door right um, so that is something and Cone launches like that aren't that strong usually on uh, regular, so that is a pretty cool feature of Lasso is a lot of launches that you can do give you a lot of momentum, which is pretty fun. Um, besides that, so you also have a map in this game. It's not very useful most of the time, however the main reason why we would use it is sometimes in certain sections of the game, you're in like a combat section where you have to clear all the enemies, right? And sometimes, like, one enemy, they'll kind of hide from you or, you know, they're kind of, like, glitched out of the map or something. So, if you're in one of those combat sections, you don't know where the last enemy is, you can just pull up your map real quick. And most of the time, it's going to tell you where the enemy is. Um, so, that's pretty much the only reason why you would use the map. The other thing is you have night vision. I forgot what it's actually called. But yeah, it, it, like using it on dark maps is ideal, like the Mombasa streets. Uh, however, night vision is also useful. Like, so if you're in an area where, let's say, you're out of plasma pistol, you killed a lot of enemies. Even if it's bright as hell, you turn on your night vision, and it's gonna be showing you. Like, notice how each one of these objects have like an outline, right? So it becomes much easier to see um, if there's like a plasma pistol on the floor or something like that. So sometimes you want to use the night vision to actually see weapons on the ground or stuff like that. Uh, but besides that, it also gives like outlines of enemies, uh, which is pretty useful. Um, obviously in this level, I don't usually turn on my night vision, but it, yeah, just night vision is very useful for the street sections or data hives, stuff like that. Um, so, for Lasso, you also may wonder how you know what weapon you have out at times. So, there are kind of three ways to know what weapon you have out. One is switching your weapons. So, I have become very, very familiar with the sound of the pistol being pulled out, which is this sound here. This one right here. So, I know every time I press... You know why to switch weapons if i hear that sound out my i have my pis my pistol out my human pistol so uh as you sort of practice the run you'll kind of learn and know what the sounds of each weapon being pulled out is uh which is pretty useful uh, what i'll actually do here is i'll just turn on the bandana skull real quick so i could also show you with the nades oh if this game actually wants to Where is it? Skulls and bandana. So uh, now you could also do that same thing with nades. I was switching weapons, but you can do it with nades. So right now I have frag frag grenades out. If I switch to plasmas, you can hear the plasma sound. If I switch back to frags, that's the frag sound. Um, so yeah, uh, by the audio cues is like a big way that you do it. However, also in some situations, you know, if there's a light. If the the light is shining in the proper way, you can use your shadow. Oh, I have a pistol out. Okay, I have a sniper out. So in certain situations, you can use the shadows, or you could obviously always just shoot the gun and figure out what you have out. But obviously, if you have like rockets or something, that might not be the best way to 
to figure it out. Um, a lot of the time you're going to be using the audio cues, so that is something to be familiar with. Um, what else do we got here to talk about? Oh yeah, so the go-to combo for the most part in 90% of this run is going to be a precision weapon and a plasma pistol. Um, so whenever we kill enemies, so well, first of all, in this game there's no elites or anything like that. It is just brutes, grunts, jackals, and hunters and drones. Um, so basically jackals you know a plasma pistol to their shield will crack their shield they'll start running away easy to deal with um you can headshot them you can back smack them whatever grunts one all grunts one headshot uh to the face and they're they're dead um brutes if you do a fully charged plasma pistol and hit them it will crack their shields and then just one precision weapon bullet to the face and they're dead um the only exception to that is there are some like chieftains uh which you know hammer hammer brutes or stuff like that where you can't just plasma pistol them uh you won't crack their their shields um so those are like the only exceptions um but yeah essentially just plasma pistol and like your go-to is you almost always want a plasma pistol and a precision weapon Unless stated otherwise in the walkthrough. Um, so yeah, I think like the only other thing, like I did mention with the catch skull, right, is enemies, um, you want to use nades to like kind of make them dodge. So like for example, these brutes, right, if I throw a nade at this guy, he's going to kind of run away-ish. If I throw a nade at these guys, they're, they're dodging and so forth, right? So using your catch skull is very useful um, to make enemies sort of dodge out of the way um, and you can just run by enemies in a lot of cases. Uh, so the only other thing that I really kind of want to talk about is just the general tier list of enemies. So in Lasso, it, the, the tier list of enemies is kind of funny. Um, because grunts are actually at the top of the list. Like you want to, whenever you're in a fight and you have to kill enemies, you want to kill grunts ASAP because grunts will just spam you with grenades. Like brutes, as you can see, they're kind of shooting at certain ranges and stuff like that. Um, but grunts and also spike grenades aren't really that deadly unless they just directly stick you. But grunts, they will throw plasma grenades at you like no other. And obviously plasma grenades, like even if you're near them and the, they explode, they're going to do a lot of damage to you and potentially kill you. So grunts are the number one priority. Like whenever you're in a section, you want to kill grunts. Um, after that would be a brutes and specifically a brute with a brute shot. Brute shot brutes are very deadly. So anytime you see a brute shot brute, you want to get rid of them ASAP. Um, the rest of the brutes, they can have... Uh, a different assortment of weapons like either a carbine rifle a mauler a spiker or a plasma rifle i believe that those are the only other four that they can have um so carbine is pretty deadly like it, it will get rid of your shields very quickly and also even your health like if it if they shoot you for a few seconds you're gonna die um Spikers and molars, if you have no shields, they, they melt your health. If you have shields, it's not that bad. And then plasma rifle is whatever. Like Because plasma rifle, it will get rid of your shields very quickly. But you don't really have to worry about dying that much um, to a plasma rifle. Um, so basically, if you see a plasma rifle brute, lowest priority. The other three weapons are like medium, and then brute shot is the highest. Um, so that's kind of whenever you see enemies and you can identify different threat levels uh, and which ones you want to get rid of ASAP. Um, I'm not going to talk about hunters and chieftains because those are very one-off situations. Um, but yeah, the the jackals and drones, for the most part, do very little damage. Because as I talked about with the tilt skull, um, your health, like for them to actually kill you with a plasma pistol, 
it, it will take them a long time. Like you have to not be male. Like you just have to be standing still and letting them shoot you for like five, 10 seconds for them to kill you. Um, if you're like meleeing and if you, you know, shoot a jackal and it's shooting you back and you go, you run up to melee, like you're going to still be alive most of the time. As long as you're keeping track of your health, roughly, it's going to take anything with a plasma rifle or a plasma pistol, a needler, pretty long to kill you. So drones and jackals, you can almost ignore. Uh, but yeah, grunts are at the top of the list. Brute shot brute. Um, then carbine spiker mauler uh below that and then plasma rifle at the at the bottom um so yeah that quite a mouthful there um uh, went over a lot of details but it is just good that we went over this stuff um so that when i actually get into the run i don't have to talk about any of these small details um so yeah that's pretty much it um i'll see you in the next levels like i said the levels going forward it's gonna be a full game walkthrough most consistent methods but you should be able if you follow the route and learn it be able to get like a 130 an hour 30 an hour 40 sort of time um and then i may also make some videos about like different il specific strats and stuff like that if you really want to go really fast and maybe try to contest me for world record, which would be awesome. I'd love to see more people do runs. Uh, but yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much it. Sorry for the mouthful. Uh, but yeah, I'll catch you in the next videos and uh, yeah, we'll go through things pretty quickly. So uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.